All right. Uh, welcome back again. So um, what I wanted to do is talk about a little something that I, I ran into before I <clears throat> started the Mechatronics program. Um, and basically, what happened was I had a technician come out to fix my dishwasher, which was under warranty. So I came in, tested a couple things, and uh, basically, they're just a component checker. Um, and really, that's probably kind of the job I thought about going into. He said that he's got six months of training and um, put him out on the road. And he makes about eight, ten stops a day. And my stop was to come in and... He checked a few things and he goes, look, looks like the power's coming, just like uh, the power's not coming on at all, but he did some more testing. I can't remember. Maybe he tested to see if the motor came on, whatever. He goes, oh, looks like control panel's out. I said, okay, so what do you do for that? And he goes, well, I'll be back in three days. And I said, three days, what? He goes, I'll just order the control panel and replace it. So um, I said, wow, that's it? And yeah, so he came back and 10 minutes later, he's got it done, right? So um what I intend to, to kind of share with you here is, well, kind of a, con, a continuation of that story was that um, my oven went out and, oh, geez, what's the name of that place in, in Portland? It's not A1 Appliance. Oh, geez, I can't remember. They're uh, just downtown, just uh, on the east side of the river. Um, they carry a lot of components. And so um, when my oven went out, um, I figured, you know, I can just, you know, take and replace the, the control panel. That's all technician was going to do anyway. Um, so um, I called down there and because um, I've been down there for other parts and they said, sure. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's not at our store. You'll have to go to the Vancouver uh, warehouse. I said, no, that's not a problem. I'm in Vancouver. Um, so they're just west of downtown you know, warehouse there. So one picked up the part did a replacement there. And I said, you know, someday, I mean, I took it out and I go, wow, at least I'm, I might want to keep these relays. Maybe someday I'll be able to figure out what's wrong with this thing. So it sat until, I don't know, a couple months ago, I finally pulled it out or a month ago when I pulled it out for this class, I guess. So I just want to point out some of the pieces of the circuit here that might be familiar to you all. Uh, one of the things I was going to do is just, you know, check the traces and see if anything was, didn't look right on it. But Obviously, I must have not done a good job because I found it just a few seconds or just a bit ago. But um, what you'll see here is you've got the transformer here, and you can see here I got four diodes. Four diodes in that arrangement. If you're taking the semiconductors class, you know what that means. That's your full bridge rectifier. So you're getting the DC. I'm guessing this is probably stepping down from 110 to 12 because these relays are all 12 volts here. All right, you'll see that they are handled 250 volts, um, uh, sorry, at uh, 10 amps. And then if we go over here, uh, this one's interesting. It says, oops, how about we scroll a little bit further. Um, that one there says that it can handle um, 10 volts on normally closed and 20 volts on normally open. All right, that was kind of interesting. But um, this, as you can see here, it's my L1, L2. So, you know, I've got a um, two phases, right? Turn that around here a little bit. You've got two phases. And so that's that big click that you hear on your, um, come on, focus, on the oven when it kicks in, right? That's that big old relay flipping in there with 12, just 12 volts control circuit control, controlling your, actually, it's only uh, 110, right? Because it's just one of the L. L1, L2s, right? So each one of them, it's, it's individual. But basically, that's bringing in so that you can have, rather than going across neutral, going across your, your second phase there. And then up here, these are the uh, relays that kick on the bake, the bottom, bur the bottom uh, burner, burner element, and Borla turns on the top element. All right. And then what I thought was interesting here is what we've been talking or what I had in my recent video is that each of these relays have their own diodes. And we know why they have diodes on there. The reason is because these coils, when they de-energize, they're going to send, you know, maybe anywhere from, I don't know, eight to 10 times as many volts. So it's going to, you know, shove, shove 100 volts back through the system. Um, so what we're doing with the diode is instead of allowing it to go back to the power, it's going to recirculate itself. You know, this 
is the positive side. And then when it really reverses or turns off, the negative here, and it's just going to go through and um, burn itself out through the, the coil there or, you know, wear itself out. Same thing with each of these. Each of them have their own diodes. Um, I haven't got to this part of the presentation, and I don't believe here, but the other part to this, and, and I'm pretty sure the top corner is the positive corner. I don't remember. But um, the thing is that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it's possible, but um, what these um, transistors might be doing is scaling up the current so that you have sufficient current to go through and trigger those relays. Now, the other part that I didn't mention in the previous video is that even though I think there were 125 ohm um, resistance across the coil, and that meant it, it took 40 milliamps of current, well, the same thing goes with motor. These are inductive. So what we know is that they may take four to five times that. So you're going to have an inrush current of almost 200 milliamps. And we know that the Arduino can't handle 40 milliamps or 40 is the max. They actually probably can take an inrush up to 80. But anything over 80, you can start having problems. So what I'm guessing is that they're using these transistors uh, there to amplify the current to, to uh, get the gain on it to be sufficient to go through and trip those. All right, so um, some more things on here. I do not, uh, I should know what that, I thought that was a logical. The LM324, um, I have to think about the LM324, sounds familiar for some reason. All right, um, so what I did is uh, I opened this up and you know, I, I really wanted to get to the other side. I figured that might be where the problem is and um, I guess I did take this out once before, and, and I, 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 you, you can see these buttons are the exact same ones that we see in the Arduino. Um, so, um, you know, they could be recycled. You could unsolder them, bring them out, use those. Um, what I was trying to get to here is that when I would start playing around with these, I found out this one, no clicky. Um, it may still be working, but but it was wearing out. That one would need to be replaced, right? And these are relatively cheap, and well, it's also kind of loose in the in the sock. Well, they're all kind of a little loose, so I figured that well, maybe that's it. Now over here, um, this um, four-digit um, that's a clock mechanism, right? I'm guessing that this might be the driver for it. Um, although the driver could be built into this is the microprocessor. So like our our Adrenos have got that. Uh, well, I can't remember the, the letters on that um, on that chip. I can't remember off the top of my head. So this is just a different type of chip, right? Um, it has different functionalities. Obviously, um, it can keep time. It can go through and, and set a timer, probably set a buzzer. Yeah, where is the buzzer? Um, don't know where the buzzer is, but um, I just want to kind of point that out. But um, really, I thought that might have been the problem. And I got all these nice LEDs, pretty bright they look like. Um, and who knows what the transistors are there for. But each of the diodes, the light emitting diodes, has its own resistor. We know that we need to go through and um, uh, limit the uh, current to those. So that is an orange, orange, red, right? So that looks like it's like a 330 or something like that on there, which I think is the calculation I asked you all to make. Um, go to the other side here and you know, the thing is to go through and look at your solders, right? To see anything looks bad, nothing looks bad there, right? And, you know, if I had just taken this apart, right? See if this will focus here, okay? And just a little extra um, flux on those. But if I was to slide it over a little bit more, what you'd see right here, it's got a pretty bad solder joint there, right? Now, did it? Um, how did it come off? Well, it could have caused the current could have caught it caused it to melt off. Now, I didn't see anything on the other side of that, but obviously that has come desoldered. If I look on the other side, ooh, look at the. We're talking about that big clicky clicky. 
the uh, one that kicks on the 220. So I'm guessing what happened is that it kicked on way too much and uh, uh, essentially melted away the the solder there until it, uh, you know, if it was a little bit loose, and that's the thing about proper soldering. Um, so what may have happened was there was a little bit of a crack in there. That crack then began to arc, and as it arced, it then became started to melt until it melted all enough away that it no longer made a connection. So that is probably why my oven stopped working. I could have probably fixed that, but as it is, I spent $120 and learned a little bit about how to uh, where to go through and find circuit boards and get them easily replaced. So um, hopefully that, um, you know, after you take the semiconductor class and um, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable looking at, at boards like this. And typically what, what you're gonna see, I think when, um, what I've seen in the past, is you'll see a capacitor that's puffed up. That's a common thing that'll go. Diodes are really hard to, you know, to determine whether or not they, they're burned out. Um, in easy ways, you just, you know, it's, it's difficult, but you know, if you could go through and test the current through it, right? Does the current pass this way or the current pass? But you can't do that unless it's broken, right? So um, you might be able to test the resistance, but you never know if you're testing the resistance, whether that's going to be the resistance of the coil or resistance of the diode. Um, but sometimes people will try to bug them um, with a positive and negative and, and try to check to see if the diodes are out. But the diodes are the hard ones to test because they're really going to be pulled out sometimes. Um, but the puffy capacitors are usually the ones that are pretty dead giveaway of, uh, of a problem. Um, the other thing is, you know, the coil could have gone bad here. But when it was working, the one thing I know is it was just the oven wasn't kicking on. Still was able to get to the stove top, right? Um, so I'm trying to figure out. It's kind of surprising that there's, you know, I would have said figure for the top stove, right, that you would have had um, four, right? You've got boil break, but I have four burners. Actually, I have five. I've got a fifth burner, which is actually just a warmer burner. So that's kind of interesting um, how they might be doing that. Um, I have an idea, but I don't want to um, speculate that they're doing these as binary values. So that's one, two, and uh, four. So it's possible using some type of binary combination of those to cause it out to, but that's kind of, why would you save one, one trans, one um, relay? So I'm not exactly sure what they were doing there, how they were able to go through and get all those four burners running off those three, but I have an idea that might be a little bit what's doing. All right, so hope you found that interesting. Uh, at least I can recover uh, some relays and uh, that uh, LED panel and maybe some switches. All right, hope you uh, found that kind of interesting. I, I, I found it interesting.